Welcome aboard the International Space Station. This is NASA's Space Science Investigations Humans in Space for Xbox Series S. We start our tour in Node 2 of the US segment with the International Docking Adapter behind us. This is where NASA astronauts arrive at the station. We now move into Kibo, the Japanese Space Agency lab. Located at the far end of Kibo is the GEM Exposed Facility which houses experiment modules that operate outside of the station itself. There are also two portholes for monitoring the external modules, which provide a limited view of the station. The experimental logistics module is attached to the ceiling in Kibo and is used as stowage space for experiments and equipment. Returning to the main Kibo module and rotating the camera to our original orientation, we cross Node 2 on our way to the Columbus Orbital Facility. Columbus is the European Space Agency lab module, used for a variety of experiments on board the ISS, and was designed by the organisation that later became the Airbus Group. On the back wall of Columbus are mission patches, carried by ESA astronauts, including the famous Principia patch worn by British astronaut Tim Peake. Returning to Node 2, we turn left towards the US lab. Before we enter, let's check out the sleep station attached to the wall. The sleep stations generally contain a sleeping bag, laptop, and the astronaut's personal effects. Okay, let's head into the US lab module, officially named Destiny. It was installed in 2001 by the crew of Space Shuttle Atlantis. One of Destiny's many roles is Earth observation. There's a 20-inch window in the floor named the Wharf. Window Observation Research Facility. One of the missions in this game is actually to install a camera here and photograph a JAXA transfer vehicle on its way to the ISS. Returning once again to our original orientation, we continue through the US lab into Node 1. On the wall of this module are various NASA mission patches from the shuttle era. We'll now continue into node 3, which contains two vital pieces of space station equipment. The first, of course, is the space toilet. Located to the left of the cubicle is the advanced resistive exercise device, which can replicate weightlifting through variable resistance. Attached to node 3 is Leonardo, the permanent multipurpose module. It stores spare parts, and astronauts use this space to change in and out of their spacesuits when travelling to and from Earth. In the floor of Node 3 is the famous cupola, used for Earth observation and capturing visiting cargo vehicles. Currently attached to the station is the JAXA HTV, which you'll capture as part of a mission in game. We can also see a Soyuz vehicle attached to the station. Let's leave the cupola and return to node 3, which incidentally is named Tranquility. We'll now head back the way we came, past the space toilet, and into node 1. Attached to the other side of node 1, or Unity, is the Quest airlock. This hosts US spacewalks, and it's where the astronauts don their EVA suits. We'll now head through the other side of Node 1, into the Russian segment of the station. Continuing through a crossroads into the Zarya FGB functional cargo block, we find ourselves in the first module of the ISS. Zarya was mated to the first US module, Unity, shortly after its launch in 1998 to form the basis of the International Space Station. We now enter Zvezda, the functional and operational heart of the Russian segment. On the left of this module is the dining table, where crew gather for special occasions, and we can also see sleep stations on the wall. Unlike the US segment, the sleep stations have windows. There's also a space toilet in the Russian segment. Let's turn around and retrace our steps back through the Russian segment, where there is still more to see. Located between the two modules are docking ports. One has since been replaced by a new lab module. 
which isn't modelled in this virtual version of the ISS. Returning through Zaria, we head to the crossroads between the US and Russian segments. Attached to the floor is the mini research module. Continuing through this module, we find a docked Soyuz and some Russian mission patches around the docking ring. We now enter the habitation module of the Soyuz, where the crew spends most of their time while traveling to the space station. This module contains communications equipment, docking avionics, and a toilet. Above us is the docking port and ISS lab module, and below is the Soyuz re-entry module. Let's enter one of the seats in the re-entry module and check out the control panel above. The crew would sit in roughly this orientation during launch and landing. There are two small windows either side of the re-entry module and docking controls located below the main panel. We now return to the ISS through the Russian lab module. Our tour is almost complete, there's just one more module to see. We return to node 1 of the US segment, head through the lab, and eventually arrive back where we started in node 2. Docked to the floor of Node 2 is the JAXA transfer vehicle. As of 2022, the HTV has reached the end of its operational life and will be replaced by the HTV-X. As we return to our starting position, this concludes our virtual tour of the International Space Station. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Do feel free to like, subscribe and all that stuff for more Space Sim content. Take care.